Hello all, Rick here. Why is Earth, the home planet of the humans, in case you didn't know, the capital of the United Federation of Planets? On the surface, it adds up. Star Trek is, after all, a show about the future of humanity, but in-universe, does it still make sense? Vulcan, Tellar, and Doria, the other three founding member worlds, have been spacefaring for far longer than humans were, and their worlds already had ties to the greater galactic community. Vulcan already had expansive star charts, and Doria had a powerful military, and Tellar had much in the way of trade and construction capabilities, yet Sol became the central point of power? Well, there are three reasons that I can find in canon as to why this is the case. The first of these is that the premise of the UFP was the human's idea. When humans first entered into the interstellar stage, their neighbourhood was far from a peaceful one. Tensions between the Tellarites, Andorians and Vulcans were constant until the emergence of humans onto the scene. Despite the personal gripes from individuals like Jonathan Archer, mankind had been open and receptive of the Vulcans' chaperoning and guidance. While the Vulcans still found humans to be impulsive and illogical, it should be noted that ambassadors such as Saval found them to be good people overall, just that they did not allow their personal feelings on the species to cloud their judgement. How very Vulcan. The friendship with the Andorian Shran that Archer formed would go on to prove to the Andorians that humans, despite their close relationship with the Vulcans, were not simply at the behest of their old adversaries and soon humans were earning a reputation not only as instigators of change, but also a more neutral party that could be approached. Bringing Tellar into the equation, it was discovered that humans tolerated even the belligerence of the notoriously hard-headed species, and their reputation in surprising mediation grew. This was something that the Romulan Star Empire recognised early on. Originally dismissive of the humans, they foresaw the influence that mankind would have on the other species as they managed to quell centuries of animosity by providing a stable negotiating ground and earned the respect of their immediate neighbouring powers. In the face of rising threats from the Star Empire, it was Earth that pushed for a coalition of planets against this foe and put in much of the legwork to get negotiations underway, which lends me to my second point. Earth put everything on the line when it formed the UFP. During the Earth-Romulan War, the Coalition of Planets helped out where it could, but it did not run as smoothly as Earth had hoped, with the Vulcans, Andorians and Tellarites each being forced to take more of a backseat role for various reasons. This is why, despite the Coalition, it was remembered as the Earth-Romulan War, and I have a whole series breaking down the different aspects of that if you're interested. In the wake of the conflict, rather than be petty at how much Earth had to weather alone, the humans kept their focus on the unity they had built and went a step further in an attempt to formalise the Alliance into a new, more permanent form, the United Federation of Planets. They went all in on this venture, disbanding not only their marine military, the Makos, but their own Starfleet. The Humans Naval Exploration Force, Earth's main organisation, was completely disbanded and reconstituted under the umbrella of the UFP. Starfleet was completely given over to the joint control of the other member worlds, which is a massive commitment and a show of faith in the strength of the new alliance. Earth still had its United Space Probe Agency, but that paled in comparison and now it only had local security for planetary defence, and the rest was tied up at the whims of the UFP now. None of the other founding members made such a sacrifice, and Doria still maintained its Imperial Guard, Vulcan still maintained its own Science Council, and Tellar kept its Space Administration. Of course, they all contributed to the UFP in part, but it was Earth that supplied the most in terms of resources. The third reason is the location and geography. Earth is located in the Alpha Quadrant. Recent additions to canon from Apocrypha have revealed that Sector 001, also known as the Vulcan Sector, is on the very edge of the Beta Quadrant 2. While this dividing line is mostly arbitrary, it still makes it a good point of reference for navigation. But as Sector 001 also includes Andoria and Vulcan, it's hardly alone in this case. 
However, out of all of these founding worlds, it is the most centralised of the planets, with colony worlds expanding outwards around it at a higher rate than its neighbours too, and Earth opening up as a shipping point suddenly there's an even more secure route among these now cooperative worlds. Earth's position too allows for another feature among these worlds, a much more variable climate. Andoria's icy temperature is harsh even to the Andorians, who prefer cold climates, and can tolerate ones that would be lethal to Vulcans. Vulcans can tolerate and even thrive in deserts that would exhaust Andorians and Tellarites, and Teller Prime is actually well the most similar to Earth's climates, although much drier, with a lot of its water being underground or in cave networks, but the planet was far in the opposite direction from Andoria and Vulcan. A comfortable day on Earth was a little cold for a Vulcan, a little warm for an Andorian, and a little more humid for Tellarites, but overall completely tolerable for all the species to actually live in. Living closer to the equator could provide the Vulcans with a more similar biome to home, and the opposite is true for the Andorians heading to the poles. Any of these founding species could spend an extensive time on Earth and find it perfectly comfortable. So with Earth already proving habitable for all other species, being a central point for them, and already having established its own colonies around it, it was a solid choice as a meeting point between them all. Add this to the aforementioned points of neutrality and bending over backwards to accommodate the others, and it makes far more sense to utilise Earth as a central seat of power for the UFP. This is not without some potential issues, if issues is even the right word. The UFP is not supposed to be a human-centric organisation, but with its base of power being on Earth, it entices many humans into its structure. I'm reminded of company towns, when a single organisation owns the majority of structures and employment in the given area. While not quite a one-to-one -one comparison, because you know, no money in the UFP, as a human being born on Earth you instantly have access to Starfleet or any other myriad of Federation organisations that have their bases on Earth, such as the Daystrom Institute, Federation Archaeological Institute and so on. This leads to most of humanity enrolling in some Federation career, especially Starfleet because it's so easy to access. It's not exactly an issue as there is no bias behind the high number of humans employed, but it is still something to keep an eye on. Definitely something that outsiders to the Federation narrow their eyes at occasionally. Thanks for watching this quick breakdown on the things that make Earth the prime real estate it is for the seat of the United Federation of Planets. And if you are wondering, in Apocrypha it was cited that Telar Prime would make a potential second capital if Earth ever fell. Until the next video, I've been Rick. So long, and goodbye.